Hello everyone. Um, I don't typically do this um, review magazines, but the reason why I wanted to make a video about this issue of Hobby Japan, which is uh, the uh, September ish October issue of uh, Hobby Japan 2022, is because uh, it came bundled with this. Now, uh, Japanese magazines typically. Uh, have special issues where they come bundled with cool stuff. Hobby Japan is uh, no, no exception and it came with sort of an exclusive bundle set um, for Hobby Japan which was the um, Kyokai Senki weapon set HJ version which is Hobby Japan. So I wanted to have a look at what's inside it and then sort of share it uh, with everyone as well. So let's have a look. So you can see I haven't opened this one yet. Um, so this is going to be a surprise for me as well as you. But from the image, I think we know what to expect because uh, it's actually a description on the back as well. But I do want to see what the runner looks like. Fairly, fairly well packaged actually. That's um, pretty safe in there. Very snug. Let's go, let's go. Alright, so there's nothing else in the box aside from uh, some structural cardboard and one bag, one runner. Open that up, we'll see. Um, it looks like the uh, the weapons that you actually get in the new uh, P Bandai Kyokai Senki set, which was a um, sort of a prequel version of the Kenbu, I want to say, or maybe one of the others. Um, but yes, yeah, so you get um, sort of a automatic grenade launcher and a lot of armor pieces that sort of fit onto the existing Kembu set. Is that for Kembu? Yeah. So, um, and then there is a left-handed uh, grip. So the left-handed grip allows you to dual wield a lot of the handheld weapons for uh, Kyokai Senki uh, models. That's one of the things I'm interested in. Uh, not to mention there's a curved sword which does not come with any of the other kits, which I like a lot. Um, yeah, I think it fits the aesthetic very well. And then there is the power driver, which is surprisingly long. I didn't expect this power driver weapon to be that long. So yeah, this is pretty fun. Um, even if you don't own a Kyokai Senki, ca uh, Kyokai Senki set, you can probably use these parts for to great effect, actually. So yeah, um, that's what you get in the set. But um, I'd like to have a look through the magazine as well. And depending on how well received this video is, I might do more. Because there are a lot of very interesting issues of Hobby Japan. And every issue has a theme. And this one is notable in the sense that it's not featuring any uh, kits. But uh, actually a whole set of uh, model kit painting... Uh, paints and you can see uh, so that's the cover story and for those of you who have not read or purchased uh, Hobby Japan before it's a Japanese magazine however I typically use Google Lens to sort of translate it and, and enjoy the magazine as well and uh, a lot of ads very interesting um, product releases in Hobby Japan they tend to be the publication that has previews of new products the earliest. I often see previews in Hobby Japan even before they come out on uh, uh, with YouTube uh, channels and a lot of the reviewers outside. So this is this is pretty fun. They tend to have an inroad on a lot of the new releases. Um, this is the case in point. Uh, we got a lot of promo from uh, which from Mercury early on 
in the magazine. So this is one of them. Uh, but this has already been, these two have already been released. And then there's the cover story of Paints, which is very, very cool because they go through a whole bunch of different mediums as well as different brands. Uh, and you can see that we've got your lacquer, your Mr. Color lacquer paints, and then the effects. And there's a ton of written articles. I think it's very, very well, very well uh, researched and very well experimented on to sort of achieve all the effects. And this is not like the corporate spiel that the companies put out. This is actually real test cases being conducted by reviewers themselves. And it's always nice to sit down with a magazine and sort of read uh, what, what they think. And then, you know, airbrushed, hand brushed. And then um, even Citadel, Vallejo, as well as AK Interactive, if I'm not wrong. So they do go through quite a lot of uh, different brands. And there's a, a purely dry brushed uh, treatment for an RX78. That's pretty cool. Oh, so this is weathered. This is purely dry brushed. That's very, very cool. I, I like the different treatments and the different uh, styles. Got some nice transparent, clear. You've got the NASCA, which isn't very well covered on on YouTube. And the cool thing is that your Mr. Hobby weathering fluid is incredibly, incredibly well documented actually i i really love what they've done with this they give you the serial number of the uh the product used and then the effect i really wish you could zoom in but i mean that's the uh drawback of pen and paper right i've not seen this brand before and then you have the vallejo so yeah this is pretty cool Okay, from what I know, this is sort of uh, uh, research on uh, uh, with the readers. It was a survey conducted with the readers on the type of paint uh, they've used. And uh, so Mr. Hobby Lacquer Paints is by far the most predominantly used. And then you've got, I think that means others or miscellaneous. Um, and then you have water-based acrylic, which is 9%. Am I right? No, this aqueous? Anyway, you can translate it and you'll probably be able to find out uh, later on. I think this is types. This brands and this is types of paint. Anyway, uh, I, I, I'll i sit down at my leisure and use Google Lens to slowly plot my way through this magazine later on. And so, um, aside from that cover story, we've got features and the feature feature articles usually involve a new release but also a sort of a, a glow up of that release you can see that the treatment of model kits in this magazine tend to be of a more professional standard they're not out of box builds and they're not stock builds they usually involve a little bit extra panel lining um, metal etch work and a lot of painting uh, almost everything you see out here is painted or treated in some way so nothing out of the box and i think the god gundam really looks good i've never been a fan of non-uc kits uh even though i might like the uh the anime but i like the aesthetic of uc mobile suits the most but i might make an exception for the god gundam i do love uh, real grades i think real grades have a very nice balance between that getting the bang for your buck, you know, having many hours uh, required from you to put into a, a, a kit, I, I think allows you to really get the most out of a kit in terms of dollars and cents. But also, uh, real grades have that really intricate panel lined uh, aesthetic that I really like a lot. I might actually cave and, and get this one. 
really really nice and it it does come with the effect parts even the non P Bandai uh, kit comes with the effect parts if I am not wrong don't quote me on that ah the Zaku 4 I actually I wanted to make a video about this <clears throat> so recently the uh, artifact Gundam artifact kits uh, which is sort of a gachapon sort of a uh, micro miniature model kit set came with the Zaku 3 and this which is the Ilya Pazom Zaku 4 uh, had a really really nice color scheme which I actually sort of adapted for the Zaku 3 so there's uh, what I did with the Zaku 3 kit uh, from the artifact series There you go. And so uh, I was uh, actually very inspired by this color scheme. Uh, I think I will make a couple more videos on the uh, Artifact series actually. I really like this, this set. I have so far every Artifact kit released. There is a third wave coming out which I'm very excited about as well. Because I think it's the first wave that does not... That has a non-UC kit. And I know I just said that I'm not a big fan of... Uh, non-UC designs but the artifact kits have a very very cool sort of over-engineered aesthetic that I like a lot like I mentioned before I really like um, panel lines and all these cool panels so I'm quite excited about the third wave of Gundam artifact moving on <coughs> excuse me so moving on uh, you do get a lot of like these wait so so is the Zaku 4 not a official kit? Because these look like these look like resin uh, third party resin kits. So this, yeah, I'm not aware of a, a Zaku 4 high grade. Yeah. And so anyway, yes, SD, which I'm usually not a fan of. Um, every issue usually has a comic strip, which is cute. Uh, there's always uh, sort of a uh, adorable take on one of the predominant predominant suits of the, the month that's a Grimgird that's a Grimgird a bunny girl Grimgird that's cute um, and then a lot a lot of walkthroughs a lot of techniques you know removing panel lines removing seam lines every issue tends to be incredibly useful in a sense that it does create the opportunity to learn new techniques right so this is one where you've got like false panel lining and false chipping where you sort of tape up sort of tape up a section and then chip around it to get a stenciled out uh, chipping effect which is very cool uh, what else do we have I'm just going to go through fast because I don't think I have time to like go through every single page of this uh, magazine but I'd like to give an overview of uh, what uh, uh, Hobby Japan is about and you can see predominantly there's a lot of Gundam but uh, there are other mecha model kits as well there's the artifact kit the third wave of artifact and what was it that the Axia uh, sorry the uh, double O riser is the one that is non UC I think everything else is UC. That's the double O riser. And I think it's very nice because it's also got that engineer aesthetic. Uh, Robot Damashi. And then uh, pinups. Pinups that you can tell and put in your man cave. Or, or woman cave, indeed. Uh, fixed figuration from Kukuru's Doan. Very fun. I. I it grows on you, doesn't it? The snooty Zakutu. It grows on me. <laughs> I kind of like it. I didn't like it at first, but uh, it's very charming, especially after watching the, the movie. Um, I think it was... Uh, I'd say I'd give it a, f a 4 out of 5. Um, there are a couple of pacing issues, but generally the movie is very endearing. I love every character in the movie. So yeah, it's not bad. Uh, GMG... Ah, okay, so this is the kit that came uh, with the set. 
right? And that's not the Kenbu, that's the other one. And I don't remember what it's called, but it appears that the kit is for this guy. Uh, evidently, I think the shoulder cannon has a mount. Yeah, so the shoulder cannon has a mount, so I'm not worried about fitting it on other kits, other non-Kyokai Senki kits. But yeah, so, uh, Byakuchi. So it's the Byakuchi. And uh, so there is a Byakuchi that recently came out that is out P Bandai only in America, but outside of America, it's mainline release. Uh, yeah, that's the one. FGE use. I think this is P Bandai in the States. But outside, in, in Singapore, I've seen this off the shelf, I think. And evidently, it actually comes with these parts. Doesn't it? It might. No, it, I don't think it does. I think the stock FGE use doesn't come with these armor plates. It might come with some of the weapons, but I don't think it comes with the armor plates. So actually, this is a pretty good, pretty good buy, considering it comes quote-unquote free with the magazine. I think it's a pretty good buy. Oh, this is the Joe Hound. I, this is one of the few Kyokai Senki kits that I bought because I like the Mac Warrior aesthetic and this big, blocky, angular, chunky boy style is definitely up my alley. I'm in the midst of converting mine. I like chicken legs and I want this guy to have chicken legs. So I'm still in the midst of it, but stay tuned. I know I don't post very often, but when I do, it'll be a nice one. It'll be a good post. So anyway, Joe Hound. I highly recommend it. Rock solid kit. This is a very nice custom though. I love shoulder cannons and this really, 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 really grabs me by the danglies. Uh, Black Kambu, this is obviously a custom. Very nice. I like that the modeler did not use pure black. It's sort of a, a NATO black. I like this one. Kambuzan. This is the new Kambuzan, the big one. Um, 148 scale. Oh. Oh. The photo photograph. Uh, this modeler made a foreshortened uh, giant sword. Can you see that? It's it's perspective. The It's got a big front end. So it looks nice when you photograph it. That's uh, that's cool. That is cool. See, it's a scratch built perspective foreshortened sword. That's fun. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna skip through uh, a custom Brady Fox, uh, another custom Joe Hound. Uh, this is closer to the aesthetic that I like. That very militaristic uh, muted colors. Uh, hobby show. Hobby show in October. Oh, Dagram. Dagram kits are really having a resurgence. I've, I've been seeing a lot of these kits, even in the... In Singapore, these are quite obscure, but I've seen them coming out in hobby shops a, a little bit. And uh, as a Mac Warrior fan, it's always nice to see the Shadow Hawk. Uh, Infinitism, and then that uh, they've got ongoing series, um, like sort of short stories and all that in, in the magazine. So that's nice. I don't really read them. It's really tedious to go and grab my uh, tablet or phone and sort of scan through. But um, or oh, every once in a while, you know, uh, ride armor from oh, this short story for ride armor as well. This has got to be in science fiction, in all of science fiction, this has got to be like my number one dream to make a reality. Like the idea of having wearable armor that turns into a rideable motorcycle on a whim where you are protected and fast is one of like, I, I don't know why. <laughs> But this is like one of my personal fantasies to be able to just bend over and turn into a motorcycle. Uh, probably comes from a, a, a childhood of watching Transformers. Uh, anyway, I do not know what this franchise is. Very interesting uh, uh, mecha design though. Almost like 
it was copied by the Tao in Warhammer. That's cool. Uh, again, I'm not going through every every page, uh, but let's see. This is the new release of uh, I forgot what it's called. Um, Amplified something. Ryujin Maru. Um, Atla. This is not Bandai. Very nice. Painted with Citadel contrast paints. More Atla. This is pretty cool. Safari set. Uh, more Dagram. I gotta get around to building a Dagram soon. I, I want one of these. Uh, Princess Knight by by Volk is it Volk Volks uh, I saw this I hated it uh, <laughs> I'm not I'm not against uh, Mecha Musume models but this one really just I don't know man um, this one really disturbs me and it's not that I, I like the face it's very unique uh, the the printed facial expression is different from frame arms and is different from 30 minute mission so it's, it's a nice take on the mecha musume face design but just that weird thigh gap that accommodates the leg armor just looks so strange i i i, I just can't anyway um uh, that aside um more mecha musume then uh ultraman Whoa. Whoa, that's cool. That's lighting effects. That is very cool. That is very, very nice. They must have done it with um, sort of an acrylic tube. That is very cool. The T-Post defense. Oh, well, isn't much. I'm going to have to read this to find out whether this was done using that hollow acrylic tubing that's beautiful that's amazing i i love dioramas and i think the, the hobby japan is one of the best inspirations if you're looking for dioramas because they always tell a story uh short stories uh more ultraman i really like the new aesthetic this sort of infinitism hyper detailed aesthetic a little bit of a ripoff from Iron Man, but then again, you could say that Iron Man is a ripoff of Ultraman. Uh, but I, I like this. Um, I didn't like the Netflix series. Pacing was off. Um, the CGI was a little bit clunky. Love the designs. So, in its defense, watch it for the cool uh, suit designs. That being said, um, comment below. But have you guys seen the new Mask Rider trailer? That is pretty awesome. The idea of the... It's, even, it's got X-Men vibes. It's got... Um, so the uh, Kaijin from the Mask Rider universe are being persecuted by humanity to try and coexist. That's sort of the, 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 the substrate, the, the, the underlying uh, theme of the movie. And I really, really like it. And while watching it, I sort of got the idea that you can actually use 30 minute missions to make sort of these uh, Kaijin style and Ultraman, Mask Rider, uh, the general sort of uh, aesthetic of suited superheroes, you know. So I might actually try that with 30 minute missions. I don't think anyone's done it yet. Uh, ads. This is adorable. This is adorable. I love it. I have no idea what this is. I love it. Resin kit. Rainbow egg resin kit. King Joe. I'm going to have to go Google this. I, I need to see this on video now. What is this? I love it. Okay. So, um, always something interesting to see. Um, Warhammer. Uh, I'm not going to give Games Workshop more coverage than it deserves. For reasons. Uh, Machine and Krieger. Which is also fun. This is super... For those who don't know, Machine Krieger is like super niche, culty, uh, aesthetic, culty brand and universe that is just amazing. It's like this crossover between mecha models and historical modeling. I love it. Uh, I bought my first Machine Krieger uh, kit. I'm still halfway through it, but I'm having a lot of fun. Um, done by Kotobukiya. 
not as well engineered in terms of fit and finish, not as well engineered as Bandai kits are, but incredibly aesthetic. Just so amazing and so receptive to customization as you can see here. That's pretty cool. Uh, Meng Toys up and rising. Um, I see a lot of good stuff coming from Meng models, but um, uh, nothing that really strikes my fancy. Not even the giant Evangelion. Uh, moving on, whoa. Wow, that, this is like. So there is a, an entire section of the magazine always dedicated to historical model kits. And this is an amazing. Amazing diorama. 120 centimeters by 15. This is a huge diorama. Beautiful. Just can you imagine just painting every single figure at I think it's either 124 or 135 scale. 135 scale. Can you imagine painting every single one to us to a historical model kit standard? F-18. Historically accurate F-18. VFA-195. Uh, what else? C-130. It's all your historical kits. Oh, I love this Lightning. P-38J Lightning. This was one... Growing up, this was one of my favorite planes. I, I had a GoBot. If you know GoBots, there was a P-38 Lightning in GoBot. It's just, just incredibly goofy looking robot, but the... The jet mode or the, the prop plane mode was awesome. That was amazing. I just love that that, that little toy. Uh, okay. More kits. More kits. F4 Phantom. Some uh, messes. Okay, so I'm not familiar with this. Oh, Messi Smith 109. Okay. More 109. This is the Truno, uh, the stock Truno, not the Tofu Delivery Man uh, AE86. Uh, new releases, releases, lots of releases. New releases, reprinted. Designer interviews, resin kits, garage kits. Tora Dorogonjin. This is this is cool. I just, sometimes I really like the campiness of, of of these kits. I think this is custom. The oh, shit is a toy. Damn it. <laughs> okay, this is cool. Uh, so this is this the new movie? Is this the new Kamen Rider movie? It is, it is, it is, isn't it? Oh, you really have to comment Kamen Rider on just coming up with the best like cosplayable toys. The level of detail and the mechanical the mechanical play value in Kamen Rider toys is just amazing. I don't collect them, but I love watching them. Uh, okay, so more ads, new releases. Uh, story. So the Before Dawn series has been going on for quite a while. Um, I really like the art. I haven't been reading a lot of it, but I, I like the accompanying art for this series. More garage kits. More garage kits. Unpainted B-Stars. Uh, oh, so here we have arrived at the... What I call the cat meat section of, of Hobby Japan. So from here on out, it's a lot of uh, waifu kits. So yeah, basically... Clearly, the best way to represent World War II fighters is with anime waifus. That's uh, the cat meat section. I, I, I don't think this is going to get me... Uh, 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 marked on YouTube, so I think this will be fine. Lots and lots of garage kids. I never really liked sort of the chibi style. I thought, you know, if you want to go sexy, go sexy, right? So, that's cool. The detail on the hair is pretty amazing though. Haven't really seen a waifu kit that I really like yet. I might see one one day. I might build one one day. I, I'm actually interested but haven't been able to find a, a good one yet. 
New releases. New releases. You guys seen this? You guys seen this? The the Canon EOS Optimus Prime and Reflector. This just blows my mind. Just, just a crazy, just a crazy amount of, of, of ridiculousness. Okay, so lots of new releases. And then classified new releases. Yeah, so uh, this is Hobby Japan. Um, if you like sort of me just ranting and raving and, and sort of gushing over the cool things in this magazine, let me know. I'll do more. Um, in the meantime, I would highly recommend the uh, October issue of Hobby Japan. Simply for this, actually, um, worth the price of entry. In my opinion, um, I think this is very unique and, and super fun. This is a 2022 sprue designed in 2021. I think I think that's what that means. And uh, yeah, highly recommend it. Go for it. So that is Hobby Japan August. If you like this video, uh, subscribe, notification, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.